Robert is here, Robert at least is here, Debbie Sobrati is here, and myself. Uh, Randy is out of state, I don't know if I'm uh, able to attend this evening, so we do have a quorum. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of August 11, 2022, which is the last budget meeting. So not a budget meeting. Um, if you all have a chance, board members, to um, take a look at those minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I move to uh, approve the minutes. All uh, second. Second by Debbie. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any votes? Aye. The minutes are approved. I move this side. Um, the only item on the agenda this evening is the uh, budget for fiscal year 2024. Um, before we get to that, let's just go through the board meeting rules, which really haven't changed, but they're worth repeating. So number one, civility and decorum. Those choosing to comment should be respectful at all times, but that goes without saying. Uh, comments should be addressed to the board and not the attendance or grandstanding. Um, comments will be limited to three minutes. The comments will be limited to those items on the agenda for the city of the fiscal year 2024 budget. Uh, we will not be talking about the uh, stucco and painting work. Um, the detailed uh, memo report was sent out to the owners uh, about a week or so ago. We do not have information beyond that. Hold on, hold on one second. As we John. learn information John, John, from on. that project. Can you hold on one second, please? I'm sorry. Did you say we will not be talking about the stucco? Correct. This is the budget adoption meeting. The special assessment is not on the agenda. When is that on the agenda? You want to answer that, John? She's asking when you're going to discuss anything about a special assessment. We're going to discuss the well special assessment and, and the stucco painting project. When we have more information beyond that, which has been reported to the owners in the last week, we do not have that. We, uh, that will rely in part on work to be done on Building 18, so we get a better idea of exactly what we're looking at here. Um, the city of St. Pete has not yet issued a permit for that work. We do expect that on or around August 18th. It could be a little later. It could be a little bit before. From there, it's about two weeks to schedule the work um, once the permit's issued, and probably four or five weeks of work by the contractors. At that point, uh, we'll be able to uh, acquire more information, including a meeting and a more uh, detailed discussion of the implications for funding, which would include a question, a question of special assessment. Can, can I just so with that, I, I'm sorry, we're not, I, I really, um, you know, that's really all we have to say on the stucco at this point. This is not the comment here, we're already getting away from the agenda. Um, comments will be heard at the end I'm of the uh, presentation. Pardon me? Okay. Thank you. Is there someone off the okay. okay, the comments will be limited to the prescribed three minute limits. Mm -hmm. Questions that are embedded into this comments will be uh, taken down and addressed at the end of the comment period. Uh, for those attending remotely, comments can be made. If you want to uh, make a comment uh, verbally, uh, raise your hand, raise hand option. If you're looking at your Zoom screen, in the upper right hand corner, there's three little uh, uh, dots. More hit that to see the raise hand uh, option come down. Raise your hand. When we call on you, you'll be unmuted and you can make your comment and or question. You can also mention it in the chat if you'd like to uh, ask a question verbally. You can also make comments uh, and or questions via chat. And if you see the chat box also on the Zoom bar, uh, we will be going through those at the end of the uh, brief budget presentation. Um, and I think that's about that on the rules. So we're back uh, to the budget. I'm not going to go through all 240 slides that have been budget report. I do hope uh, everyone had had a chance to look at that, hopefully very carefully. Uh, there's a lot of information imparted uh, within that budget. It is impossible to go through all of that information in one sitting. It can take us several hours. I boiled that down to some key areas uh, that I'd uh, like to highlight go through those uh, briefly in the next uh, few minutes or so. Um, first, why do, we, why do we need generally budget for real costs and, and not only help it? 
well, there are several reasons for our highway. Our cash reserves are insufficient. We've left nothing for contingencies or emergencies, and this is on the operating side, not to mention the capital side. We'll talk about that later. On the operating side, there is no reserve at this point for emergencies. In fact, the reason for that is so is between 2018 and 2022, a five-year period, our expenditures exceeded our revenue by about $500,000. At the same time, we have an aging infrastructure. The facility, the community, is nearing 50 years old, 45 soon. So with that aging infrastructure, maintenance and grounds expenses are continued, projected to continue to rise. And this is the last point is perhaps editorializing, but I think it's based on the fact that past maintenance and grounds budgets have been underfunded because there had to be some way to offset what were somewhat uncontrollable costs, namely reserves, contributions, and insurance, which we'll talk about in a little bit. To give you a brief idea of where we are and how we got there on the deficit, this is a slide that's been shown before. This is updated to, I believe, the June financials. And you can see there the net over five years deficit of $500,000, which means cash flow is always an issue every month, struggling with cash to pay the bills. There was only one year where the expenditure side actually was within budget. That was 2020. Revenues came in around that budget, but the net net was a deficit peaking in 2022 when we had the insurance crisis of $260,000 and for a net again of just over $500,000 deficit. What does that mean for the current year? And again, this is the June financials. I don't have the July financials posted yet. I haven't seen them yet. So we closed out June with our bank accounts at $207,000. That might seem like a fairly reasonable number, but you have to net out the amount we owe to the capital reserves budget, which became necessary to defer monies into the capital reserve. When we were hit with a million dollars increase in our budget, our insurance costs at the end of fiscal year 2022, in the fourth quarter, there was simply no way we had the cash to pay for that at the operating. So what we had to do is defer payments into our capital account to the tune of $400,000. When you net that out, our cash position is actually in deficit at the end of June. So we're in a deficit of $213,000. Again, it's to make a point not to get too deep into the weeds of bookkeeping and accounting, but paying the bills and cash flow is a constant struggle. So getting to the budget itself, overall the budget is up 5.6%. Condo assessments, which is the main concern here, which is 97% of our total revenue, we're up 6%. Why the difference between 5.6 and 6? A couple of our revenue items went down slightly, and so when you balance that out, the condo assessments are up 6%. Some other highlights are total green acre costs are down 7.5%. Staffing levels remain the same as the last year, which were reduced by one janitorial position earlier this year. We also have a 3% annual salary increase paid into that green acre cost, again down 7.5%. Maintenance costs, as mentioned, the aging infrastructure are actually up 37.4%. That figure, we're at $116,000, includes $80,000 for replacement of about 50% of the turf impacted by the sugar cane mosaic virus. We've gone into detail about that in prior meetings. As you walk the community, as many of you do, when you see the yellowing, it's that then turns to almost rope-like things, and then that's it. It is transported by foot, by machine, by animal. There is no known cure for this except to replace turf. We went out and got the prices a while ago. The low price was about $160,000 to replace all of it. We're not suggesting we replace all of it this year. Some of the areas can be deferred for 
example, in the areas where uh, seawalls and canals is likely to be replaced in a couple of years, we'll probably not replace grass there immediately because we'll just be replacing it again in short order. Uh, but uh, that maintenance, those maintenance costs do include that uh, $80,000. Our insurance costs uh, were down 4%, $90,000. Um, as you recall, last year they were up about uh, somewhere in the order of a billion dollars. Fortunately, uh, we did not do a special assessment on that in the hopes that they would reduce a million dollars. And we'll get into a little bit of the detail of the insurance and why it's down 4%. Um, that's certainly good news, but nowhere near uh, offsetting a million dollar increase we had only a year ago. Reserve contributions are up. 136,000 or 9.8% included uh, within that is $155,000 to partially repay with the uh, capital reserves fund. Uh, again, I mentioned uh, just a minute ago that we owe the reserve fund from operating 420,000 as a result of cash flow difficulties resulting from the insurance crisis of about a year ago. So what do our revenues look like? No surprise to anyone, maintenance fees, the money that we all pay to keep this place going, make up everything, 97%. Um, the only other thing that even really registers is the revenue we take in from Waterside North for access to amenities. All the others, it's probably 10 or so others, account for only 1%. So it's, it's all about the maintenance fees. If you come to zero or something, if something goes up, it largely comes out there. To go into uh, more granular detail, this is the actual budget, and you can see 6% increases in maintenance fees, carports, garages, kayaks. Um, leasing administrative fees are up a little more. That's based on trend. We actually been doing a little better there, so we're able to take in a little more revenue. Laundry fees based on trend and flat, same violation fees. Uh, legal fees based on a trend, and these are very small lines that are down um, slightly, actually down a percentage wise, quite a bit, 60%, but only 45. Mm -hmm. It got about plus minus $100,000, and they will be going up in accordance with the other increases on the revenue side. Um, reserve interest, the only other one really worth talking about is uh, down. Why uh, we have less money in reserve because we've been spending it down on balconies, <coughs> on roofing, on emergency air conditioner uh, platform replacements, emergency fire panel replacements, emergency electric panel replacements. So we have less money in reserve and therefore we bring in less interest. On the expense side, uh, you can see two items make up almost 80% of the budget, um, areas which we don't have a whole lot of control. Uh, I'm not saying no control, but little control. So the insurance and contributions to the capital reserves make up 79 or almost 80%. Um, administration, 15%, as well as 11 maintenance. So we'll get into all of those. Um, but the total budget uh, appropriation on the revenue side, uh, just over $6.3 million. By category, um, administration uh, is 15 again, 15% of the budget, but up less than 1%. Uh, the big mover there on a dollar basis uh, is the security contract, and I'll talk uh, a minute, in a minute about that as a highlight. Um, Green Acres personnel is actually down, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it, uh, insurance down 4%, well, I'll hit these on highlights so I won't dwell on it here. Um, the big move there was uh, uh, in the all lines insurance, which includes our wind and hurricane insurance, uh, was down slightly. Flood insurance is actually going up, and I'll talk to that in a minute. That's based on a reappraisal of property uh, that came in higher last year. We were appraised at 60 million total value. We are now up to 80 million total value, and by FEMA rules, the flood insurance budget the flood insurance uh, premiums to increase accordingly. Uh, maintenance, there's a, a whole lot in here. That's the uh, it's only about 10% of the budget, but it's up a 
about 37%. And we'll talk about some of the big movers on, on that line, which are grounds, uh, irrigation care, uh, the bigger numbers, uh, dollar lines, certainly the grounds budget. Um, some of the other smaller lines are, are big percentage, of, but, but uh, small dollar amounts. We'll talk about uh, at least the first three or four of these uh, in a moment. Um, utilities um, up about 6.5 percent. The big one there is water and sewer, and uh, we'll get back to the trend on that um, in a minute. Uh, up 9.8 percent. You can see the, the contribution to pool reserves that's set by our reserve study is required by law. We are required to fund that amount in our reserve study. The only way to not do that is by a vote of membership to. Uh, defund that or fund less than the amount of the study. Um, uh, I'll show you the screen that shows the contributions there over the next several years in a few moments. Um, the repayments, again, those are the start of the repayment of the monies we owe to the reserve funds uh, at 155,000. Uh, that means the balance will be covered in a declining, on a declining basis over the next two years. So this is the highest that repayment will be, um, I believe. Uh, projected to be 140 next year, 125 in fiscal year 26, which would then make the repayment flow. That money is necessary. We have to uh, balance those books. We have to repay ourselves um, in order to have the funds to keep doing projects over the next several years. And again, the reserve interest is down, um, as I mentioned earlier, because there's simply less money in the account. Uh, the clubhouse uh, and yacht club budgets, I, I'm not going to go into a great deal of uh, detail on. Uh, there is detail in the 2024 report that is, uh, was distributed and posted. Uh, you certainly could uh, have a look at that. Some of these are pass through, <laughs> in particular, Green Acre personnel and security personnel. So you have the entire budget, and then a percentage of those costs are allocated out to the clubhouse and the yacht club. Um, so there you can uh, see an example of that. Um, and certainly, I'm not paying 200,000 is a, a good piece of change, but on a $6 million budget, it's a rather small percentage of the budget. Um, and again, the personnel items are just simply a percentage of the larger number um, that, that is included in the uh, general operating budget. Um, probably worthy to note that we have seen some. I think it's the electric utility, uh, some increases there that, that really need to be looked into to see what's driving that. Um, and pool management, uh, as all of you know, have used the pool. We've had problems with heaters, uh, particularly in the hot tub, pumps, and so there are increased costs there that are reflected in this budget. So again, I'm not going to go through 200 slides that are in the report. Please look at that report. Um, there is a whole lot of information about what things are and why they are where they're at this budget. But a couple of the highlighted items. On um, the administration side, again, that's about 50% of the overall budget. So that pie you see, that's the entire budget. Of, uh, in administration of that 15%, Green Acre personnel of 32% by security um, services. So that's the lion's share at uh, 85% of the administration budget. Um, and let's talk a little bit of the highlights of that. The Green Acre personnel line is actually uh, down 8.7%. Um, this was made possible by eliminating a janitorial staff person in early 2023. Um, we did bring back private cleaning company to clean the common areas um, in the condo buildings and the yacht club at the clubhouse or yacht club on Sundays. Uh, that is a $30,000 cost uh, for a net savings of about a little over $21,000. So that is reflected in this budget. The, in the current year budget, those janitorial costs uh, were charged off to the salary line item because there simply was no other home for them. They are properly budgeted now in the um, maintenance uh, uh, section of the budget. So they're, they're split out in the salary for the fiscal year 24. Uh, Something we use to cover the cost of our staff. 
plus health benefits, plus the 28% overhead uh, that the Green Acres charges us based on our payroll costs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's also a 3% salary increase for our staff um, at Green Acre that's included in this budget. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, the allocation of the other budget, 4% of the overall cost is allocated to the Yacht Club and 3% to the clubhouse. I'm not sure where those numbers originated. That's something that's been picked in. Time, it doesn't change the overall number. It's simply an allocation to budget line items. Um, just to take a little deeper dive into Green Acre, so um, there's all our Green Acre costs at about 578000 for the year, down 7.5%. Lion's share of that is made up of our salaries, um, property manager, office staff, uh, maintenance, and janitorial. Um, and again, so with, with the reduction of staff, that's down. Um, and general administration is flat. And management fees by contract, that's the fee charged by Green Acres, is up 3% as per their contract. Um, I'll go quickly through the slides. Uh, when you see this slide in the report or here, on the upper left hand corner is an analysis of five years of budgeting and expenditures, uh, what percentage of the uh, budget plan and expense, uh, what percentage of the budget that represented, what the mean or the mean cost was over five years, what we proposed and what we uh, what we spent and, and the, you look at that against the mean. The chart on the bottom, and I'm not gonna go through all these, but we see that that's a comparison of where we are um, by year. Um, year to be. So the, uh, and to give you an idea, the larger chart shows you expenses year to date again through the June financials, which uh, do show an increase over time of personnel. Um, to give you an idea, this year we're actually tracking through the uh, 23rd, 26th payrolls at about $60,000, uh, I'm sorry, $47,000 in the budget, which tracks to about $60,000 in the budget for the year, but you have to add the $30,000 for the janitorial privatized service. So we're tracking at about uh, a little under $30,000 under budget for the end of this fiscal year. Security, so there's a big jump here. And, and um, when I was doing this budget, uh, you know, we had a scratch a little bit of this one, but why, why the big jump there? Well, in 2023, um, this line item was, was budgeted at about $253,000. Why? We had a proposal um, on the table for uh, uh, reduced hours um, that we had talked to through the security committee, um, through the property manager. Um, we thought it was a, a solid proposal. Um, we budgeted at that $253,000, but there was a um, Rather a uh, strong reaction from the community that the uh, community didn't want to see hours reduced. So we didn't go to that uh, lower, uh, those lower hours. Uh, so the actual contract cost back to the original hours for security um, was about $370,000. Um, fiscal 2024 um, budget is actually at the spending level of 2023. Um, so the contract cost for association security services at 80% of the balance being charged to the yacht club and the clubhouse. Um, you know, again, why those percentages, historically those are the percentages that have been used. So that there's no change in the level of service. This was simply a catching up to an underfunding that was structurally built in to the fiscal 2023 budget based on a proposal we had at the time, which never came to fruition. So we are back to where we would have been. Again, those are just the trends, and you can see uh, the jump moving off to 23 uh, for year to date through, through the June financials. Um, that just ties the uh, year two, year on year two of our security contract with the nine, um, and you can see that amount. I'm going to correct that um, due to fiscal year and coming out the amount budgeted. Um, 
insurance. So insurance, 35% of the budget. The good news is that's down. Last year, insurance was 38% of the budget, but nevertheless, the, the single largest cost center in the Waterside South budget, I suspect it's probably the single largest cost center in most condo homeowner associations in Florida states. Um, of that uh, insurance budget, 59% plus the 60% is made up of uh, various home lines coverage, which includes our hurricane and wind coverage. The balances are, are flood insurance. Um, what are those other policies? We're talking about, I guess, in first of your workers' comp, you know, crime, general liability, umbrella coverage, and all that, legal defense, after shooter, cyber, gap club property, equipment breakdown, wind damage, and other property damages. Um, the, these are very small policies, except for wind damage. Um, so, this is just an explanation of kind of where we are today, recapping kind of where we've been. Uh, so, May 2022, a little over a year ago, uh, because of our news and the, uh, and the insurance market in Florida, which we don't need to go through again. I think we all listen to the news and, and pay attention to that for many reasons. But because of that, we were only able to secure uh, wind hurricane coverage for 50% of our property value. So, our property value was $60 million last year. We could only get coverage for 30 minutes. The private market um, just would not cover. It was a very complex structure. I think we were five carriers that lay at different levels of coverage, up to 30 million. Um, we were required by law to fully insure to our property value, but we couldn't. The market wouldn't support that, so we were able to get uh, $30 million worth of coverage. This year, the good news is, we are able to get 100% of coverage. Um, so 100% of coverage at the higher reappraised number of, of $80 million. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, with the installation of the new roofs, uh, the additional hurricane protection, the hurricane straps that were put in as part of the hurricane coverage and other smaller measures. Um, taken by the association, not related to wind, but we've done some uh, safety work on sidewalks that we may have seen. But nevertheless, um, we've asked this insurance, the uh, state-run insurance company. Um, so despite the massive increase in valuation coverage, so from 30 million of coverage to 80 million, so we've added $50 million worth of coverage, our premium uh, decreased 21% or $274,000. Uh, as in other years, we are not able to fund all of that at one time, so we do finance these uh, costs. Uh, the finance charge is about $38,000 for those premiums. Uh, we also have an assumption in there that when the uh, premiums are renewed, most of them are renewed in May, that there will be an additional 10% uh, premium increase. When I mentioned earlier, most of the policies are, are small. Um, wind hurricane coverage was small of them. It's 83% of our general insurance budget and just over a million dollars. So we are paying for hurricane insurance in a state that is prone to hurricanes. Uh, so that should come as no surprise. And that's where a lot of the uh, issues uh, in Florida centered around the cost of that coverage for individual homeowners and uh, condo and HOAs uh, around the state. Um, so again, good news, we're down. Good news is we have uh, full coverage at a higher level than the last year. Um, I guess the bad news, which is what most of us expected, it, it was never going to go down to where it was previously. Just the market was not going to respond in that way. Our professionals were telling that I think intuitively most of us knew that. And in fact, you know, we did, we did go down a little, but not nearly uh, in the amount that, that was spiked uh, just uh, over a year ago. And that's just a, this slide is just a summary of uh, the level of coverage, uh, the change of 
our, our mental uh, value fund increased 164 percent. So I, I was rounding the 7,956 um, premium down 21 percent, despite 164 percent increase in valuation numbers, so down 274. Um, and the last few columns, premium uh, per $100 of exposure, you can actually see it's about down from what it was last year, down 44 percent. So that's all good news. Um, but if you focus on the sharp on your right, I mean, I think this is a fairly typical trend line in Florida. Um, 2022 starts to take off, 2023 through the wrong roof. Fortunately, if I add the trend line here, we would veer to the right of that trend line and come down some. 2024, but still well above where we were just two years ago. So major increases. Some of it was unique to us last year, but a lot of it had to do with uh, the state we live in and the conditions uh, in which we live in. Blood insurance, um, our budget's up 15%. Uh, again, I mentioned earlier the cost of coverage Increase is based on the increased valuation. Um, FEMA requires us to report those increases, uh, and so the premiums go up accordingly because we have more coverage through FEMA. In the budget, we also anticipate another rise when this renews. Uh, in, in just a couple of months, we assume another 10% on top of that. Just another breakdown, another way of looking at the uh, blood insurance premium uh, for this year. And again, the trend line, uh, a little straighter line, but straight up. And again, I suspect that trend line here in the upper left-hand corner is very similar to what you'd see uh, certainly in flood-prone areas, flood zones, and most of Florida uh, resides in flood zones. Not all. There are some higher-level areas um, defined relative by Florida terms, but uh, for those of us that live in flood uh, zone or flood prone areas, I think that trend line probably see around, around the state. So the maintenance budget makes up 10% of the overall budget, but we've had some uh, changes here. Um, about half of that budget um, goes to grounds, and I'll explain that in a minute. The rest are made up of uh, a whole lot of smaller line items. The grounds budget. So the change from last year is up 4.8%. What does this cover? It covers our general landscaping work, which is done by contract and costs for that contract is just over $17,000 a month. Um, in this current year, for those of you that have been following some of the budget tracking, um, we are over budget, um, almost entirely due to cleanup costs incurred in October of 2022, which is part of this fiscal year, um, as a result of Hurricane Ian cleanup. Um, this year's contract for landscaping includes a 3% increase, which is uh, contractual, as it's built into our contract, and we did include a 5% contingency, which we did not have last year. Um, in all of these budgets, where we could, um, budgets that have the potential for moving, have the potential for addressing emergencies, we try to add at least small contingencies, realizing that something almost always comes up. Um, again, in this, this budget, we included uh, $80,000 for the replacement of about 50% of the turf impacted by the sugar cane virus. Uh, just the trend line on, on our grant expense, which had gone up. There's the, I mentioned earlier, the chart on this year's cost at October. So the um, straight line is uh, just taking the line item and dividing it by 12, which is for tracking purposes, what we do on every single line item, um, you can see we're, we're right up budget, which makes sense because the contractual costs, except in October, 
which was all the hurricane we needed to clean up. Other than that, um, we're tracking pretty close to target for 2023. Plants and shrubs, also part of our maintenance uh, budget, um, up 6,000. This is uh, plants to cover normal plant replacement and mulching, uh, which has, uh, I'll get to it in a minute, but um, you know, some of that has not been done recently. And that um, in fiscal year 22 and 23, actual expenses were less than the budget. When you're looking at costs uh, increasing in other line items, there's got to be a give, given our cash flow, and oftentimes um, give was here. Um, so we did not spend money because we had to allocate it out to other cost centers um, that were running at this end. And so, you know, the mulching clearly, um, you know, needs to improve. Uh, the plantings, uh, certainly you know, a lot of areas need to improve. We have a very active buildings and grounds committee, which um, has done a, a great deal of volunteer work and certainly a lot of work with respect, with respect to advice on what to do, where to do it, how to do it. Um, certainly value their proposal well, probably can thank them for that. Um, this budget also includes uh, 6000 for the replacement of the plants um, at Building 16, which were almost entirely lost as a result of the termite planting in 2023. Um, the plan there was to not do those plantings until such time as the um, buildings were painted. Um, that is still the plan. It is likely the, the original painting plan was to uh, do the buildings uh, along the end of TNT Drive on both sides of the TNT Drive. First, um, one reason is Coquina Key Drive, frankly, has been last, it was last in both the building uh, development project and the painting project. And so I think it's, if nothing else, sort of fair that uh, the Coquina Key buildings uh, move up the um, priority list uh, when it comes to painting the sky. Um, I, I looked well on this chart. It, it, it shows what I mentioned earlier. We actually budgeted more than we spent. And you know, I often hear, well, how can you spend money? You don't have well, we, we try to try cut back areas where we have other line items you know, for whatever reason. And it's one of those areas. And unfortunately, it shows that we're trying to provide that as Tree trimming is up 5,000. This is our annual uh, budget to trim hardwood trees. Um, annual training of hardwood trees and sending out the training of ponds. Um, if you look at the trend line here, our costs have exceeded 40,000 in each of the last few budget cycles. So um, this budget uh, covers our base contract cost of $26,000 for palm trimming and about 14 for hardwood trimming and includes another $5,000 for contingencies. We had to remove a couple of trees last year. Um, there were no contingency money, so again, that's an area that we bump into, uh, you know, the budget that I mentioned earlier, the planning. We run over here, we've got to find it somewhere else. Um, particularly when you have no reserves, when you're dealing with cash flow issues, it becomes, uh, as you are saying, in many ways. Um, you know, we dwell on these trend lines. These are all in the budget. Uh, please have a look at those at convenience. I mentioned um, aging infrastructure. This is a good example. It's a small line item, um, but it is one that has run over for several years. And so we're, uh, we budgeted only $5,000 last year. And I'll, I'll show you the middle. It's, it's actually on this slide. Um, we'll exceed that budget this year by $27,000 or 640%. Um, we are seeing a lot of heads breaking. We've had lines break. Um, it is a system that will likely need to be replaced in a couple of years. But for now, we have a bunch of realistic things. It's not going to cost us $5,000. And to hold that flat, frankly, would just impact other budget line items. So we budgeted according to reality, uh, according to wishful thinking. Um, and uh, therefore, the budget is up 400%. Small number, but big percentage jump to the 20000 Is that enough? I don't know. Um, 
the trend line would say maybe not, but uh, certainly better than having only 5,000. Just as a note, that first bucket, um, sometimes we hear about the uh, irrigation system and overuse of water. And I, I'm not defending overuse of water for any reason, but it's not potable water we're using. It's reclaimed water from the city of St. Peter's or, uh, uh, process wastewater plant uh, water effluent. Um, if the water wasn't used here, it would likely be uh, discharged to surface water uh, at the plant. So certainly no one likes to see sprinklers on in the rain, but rest assured that if they weren't on, that water would be likely just a part of a very, very much larger discharge from the city sewer system. There's our irrigation trend line. I'm not sure what happened in 2021, why it was such a good year, but it's um, been straight up from there. Uh, that's an aging system. Irrigation systems, the guy who had a parks department uh, in my life, uh, are notoriously, um, are notoriously for breakdowns. Um, it's, it's not just here, it just gets worse as systems age. Uh, a few more of these highlights, uh, building repair and maintenance, again, uh, aging systems. It's funds for uh, routine repair and maintenance of uh, exterior buildings and common areas. Uh, over the last five years, it's been overextended by more than $5,000 each year. Um, so the budget, again, is meant to budget realistically and not based on what we hope will happen, but that we expect to happen based on historic trend. Um, and there's an idea of, of the trend line there. Uh, over five years, we have averaged 26,000 uh, in expenses. Um, so we, we, we are bumping that up. The 10,000 does include some contingencies for unexpected um, events. Utilities, 11% uh, of the budget, um, vast majority of items are water and sewer bills. The um, vast majority of that is the sewer bill. Um, what are these funds used for? Uh, water, sewer, stormwater, reclaimed water, fire service. Um, the, you can see in particular, I'll highlight the sewer bills have gone up 8% on average for the past two years. Stormwater, which is an $80,000 cost we pay to be connected or to be part of the stormwater system in St. Petersburg. That is by their rules, uh, certainly not ours. Um, mm -hmm. Those costs have gone up dramatically, 16% um, average annual rate for the past few years, 16% of the cost center that is. Um, so that we double digit increases on a big number. This, so what does our St. Utility Bill look like? Um, Stewart is 37%. It's, it's the big number. Um, this, this was for June, $15,000 in June for sewer. Potable water was 8000 a little more than half of the sewer bill. The stormwater uh, was equal to the potable water at, at $8,500. So, uh, you know, these costs are continuing to go up. They will continue to go up. There's no relief in sight. It's with the exception of the reclaimed water which we've been paying. That's the, the process water again I mentioned from the city of St. Pete's sanitary sewer system. Uh, they have been at five hundred five hundred dollars and change for several years now. Of why the city wants to get rid of that water. And so they, they want to create an incentive for people to stay connected to their reclaimed water system. The, the rest of that have gone off. Solid waste accounts for about um, five percent of that. We'll talk a little bit more about solid waste. Um, they're back up on all these projections. You can review those at your leisure. Um, what have we expended on water and sewer? We're up around half a million dollars a year for water and sewer. Uh, so there's a significant cost center in this budget. Um, here. The next few slides are uh, tracking of safety utility costs uh, over time. Sit back to fiscal year 2020 because it's a pretty steady rise up. 
believe that was sewer, this is water, no, there's a sewer, I'm sorry. And again, there's a lot of information here, I can't possibly go through all of it, but it is all available in, in the report, this slide and more. Trash and recycling um, is, is up. We found um, last year that part of our, our trash uh, costs were actually not being charged to the trash and recycling budget. They were being charged to the water sewer um, line item. I don't know why or how that started or why it happened, but we've corrected that now and all of our trash and recycling costs are properly within this line item. And so what does that make for uh, compact or rental? Again, that was in the water sewer line prior to 2023. Trash hauling, it's the garbage truck to pick up the compactor to take it to the landfill. The tip fee at the landfill, and then our contract with recycling costs. Um, that big spike there in do with um, the reallocation of the cost of the problem line item, frankly. Um, our trash costs um, on their own have not increased anywhere near that trend line would, would suggest. Um, once they were properly allocated, I think it's, it's not flat, it's going up, but it's, it's certainly um, that particular trend line in this slide would be misleading if you read it in, in uh, a vacuum. It bears a more accurate reflection of charges year to date. For 2023, we're about flat with last year uh, at about 19, uh, about 20,000 through the end of June. Last um, item on the highlight slide is the contribution to reserves at 24% of our overall budget. These are the monies that are contributed from the budget over to the pool reserves to fund um, capital projects, whether a roofing project, uh, the upcoming painting project, uh, the various emergencies we've had, the fire panels, the emergency uh, electric panels, the air conditioner or platform collapses that we've had to deal with. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. So this item, pool reserves, the actual contribution is 90%. Um, the repayment from the operating, that's the money that, again, repaying from our operating budget uh, to start to make up that $400,000 plus deferred payment from back in the last fiscal year because of the insurance crisis. Um, so, up altogether 9.8%. What do we do with this money? It's funds for capital expenses identified in the mandated reserve study um, and emergency costs of a capital nature where projects of that nature are included in the reserve study. The reserve study has a 30-year horizon, um, but we largely focus on a five-year horizon, and I think the funding also focuses largely on that 5% horizon. The last full study, full study means um, engineers and the reserve consultants on site. Last time that was done was 2021. We had that updated with something called the desk update where they don't um, come on site, but they take the data, we provide them and update accordingly. Um, we're required to do a full uh, in-person update every three years, so that will happen in, in this fiscal year. Um, I mentioned earlier, State Florida requires association to fully fund the amounts identified in the reserve study or any alternative hold a vote uh, that requires 50% of the overall. In the last quarter, it's just a partial payment of the $420,000. So, um, with the stucco, move to some alternative funding. Clearly, um, by our own cash flow projections for the next two years, um, there is wholly inadequate funds um, funding to cover what appears to be a very significant cost of that project. If those are moved off, some of the other projects that are in the uh, reserve study, the grid placement, the bond bank restoration, the yacht club, pool resurfacing, 
uh, can continue. Um, those are relatively low cost projects relative to what we've seen uh, the $3 million for capitals and $3 million for those that the multi million, uh, which would be the stucco. Uh, the bridge replacement is a $100,000 project. The Pond Bank is about a $300,000 project. And the Yacht Club uh, is somewhere on the order of $80,000. We think those can proceed um, before we pull the trigger on that. We are checking and checking and checking again uh, so that we don't run into a cash flow issue um, in our reserves. Um, Excluding them would not change in any way the situation of the painting and stuff. Uh, if it is in fact the multi million dollar project um, that we think it is. Eliminating these needed projects, certainly the bond bank and the got what we're servicing, deferring them would not change what the ultimate reality of that painting and project will be. Um, there, if we defer these, to some future unknown date and just let it all go, uh, it wouldn't solve the problem. There still would not be enough in the reserves. Uh, could we increase our contributions to the reserves? Um, yeah, I, I suppose, um, but that would require an increase in the operating budget of north of a million dollars. One percentage point in our budget is worth $60,000, so you could. Do the quick math, which gets you up to about a 14% increase to add a million dollars, an additional million dollars to a reserve. Um, road reserve event, which by our reserve study should have been started. The reserve study called for it to be done over three years. We were hoping to do it over a one year period. Um, three years uh, dividing up the community and doing a third of the time didn't seem to make a lot of sense to a lot of us. Um, but you know, we may be faced with that now. Um, this will move the needle um, at a cost of between a million and two million. Why such a large range? The reserve study has this around that range for something that's called a, a milling fill, so milling off the current surface and um, resurfacing with uh, base course and, and top coat. Um, we're going to need to move that. This does need to be done. Those cracking that you see everywhere, there is, uh, they can come from a number of different places, something called reflective cracking, which is a problem in our base. Could be that. Uh, it could be simple water intrusion. Uh, and there is, even in, in the southern climate, there's expansion and contraction of roads that cause that cracking to be worse. The road condition will not get better. Um, we don't know. What that sub base looks like. So there's three layers of the road. There's the travel course, which is typically about a two inch layer of asphalt that we drive our cars on. Although that is a base course that helps um, support that travel course. And below that is a sub base, which, as I understand in Florida, I'm not an expert in Florida roads, is limestone of some sort. Um, if that sub base is, is um, not what it should be. Um, you have bigger problems than it should be. Hopefully, the sub base is intact uh, and hasn't suffered too much damage from not paved. I don't know what all this might be. These roads were paved, if ever. I understand they might have been seal coated, um, seal coated, or, or cosmetic treatments of roads at this point uh, will not suffice here. Um, these need to be paved, but um, this one. Would impact on a sub base. So this one's probably going to have to be pushed off to late 2024, depending on cash flow, or to 2025. Um, that cash flow will largely be driven by continued emergencies. Uh, the fire alarm system, we can place seven of 29 fire alarm systems that have failed. The code has changed. Um, so to replace the fire alarm system now is about $30,000 per building. 22 buildings left, we were at about a million dollars for all of them. Um, we need to have some money set aside uh, to deal with those as they occur. Um, air conditioning platforms, we've lost three or four so far this year. Um, the electric panels, we've had two fail. 
they're in the process. Those are twenty to thirty thousand dollar costs per. Um, so the emergency work has certainly impacted the cash flow in our pool reserve. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this. Four hundred twenty-one thousand. We got away from the start of the insurance crisis, uh, and we can pick that back again. This slide is a report if you want to dive deeper. It's a million two, but you have to subtract that four hundred thousand because the the uh, reported value uh, is for the uh, amount owed is included. So when you collect that, we've got seven hundred eighty-three thousand dollars at the end of June. That will drop. Um, for July reporting, because I believe we made the uh, last $300,000 payments to roofers. That was the 10% withholding. Uh, that contract cleared, and we had to pay them 10% of the other, so that will uh, drop for the July statement. Cash flows, I'm not going to dwell on what we did. There's the cash flow for the balance of the year, which shows us corrected for the amount owed coming out of the year at about 800000 if we do some of the projects I mentioned earlier on the bridge, uh, various sidewalks, uh, the transformers, firefighters, additional firefighters, we come out of uh, the end of fiscal 2024 after having paid back $155,000 at about a million. There's a couple of paint project numbers in there. Um, those are in there. We do have to pay for the work that is proceeding on the 15th. We are going to uh, move on painting the garages, the five buildings that are not, were identified as not having any structural problems. Um, so the cash for that will need to come from the reserves until we settle the issue of the total uh, price tag for uh, the balance of the residential structures and how to fund that. Um, expanding out to 2025, um, you know, once you start getting Year just to make assumptions, but uh, we could come out with about 600,000 uh, correctly uh, for the amount still um, at the end of 2025. That's what the reserve study said um, we should be doing, and I will go on that. You know, there are things that we're not going to get to some of the yacht club and kitchen equipment. Uh, furniture uh, likely some of these smaller things um, that are in here when we do the updated reserve study these will be pushed out um, you can see at the top of that slide the asphalt uh, paving building and paving was supposed to have started this year and continue for three years they priced paid for that about a million two that is supported by a uh, preliminary estimate we got from a contractor a couple of months ago. So that pretty straight mill and fill with no subface uh, base problems. It's probably a valid number. Um, and I'm almost through the budget highlight slide. Um, so by our reserve study, this is what we from the operating, and you can see that currently it projects flat for the next uh, three fiscal years, 24, 25, 26, and then a bump up of 4%, 3%, 3%. So incremental changes over time. That's what's in the plan now. Certainly when the update conditions change, this could change. Um, you know, we'll know more when the, when the study is updated in this fiscal year. So that's um, the highlights. I'm sorry I took as much time as I did. But again, there's a whole lot more information um, available in the report that's been distributed and is online. So what I'm going to do here before we go to comments um, from owners is to see if the board members have any comments or anything they'd like to say regarding the budget or the process moving mm -hmm. forward. So I'll we'll open it up to City Robinette, lawyers. Anybody know? Oh, sorry, John. I, I don't have any significant comment, John. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It's very thorough. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's my only comment, John. Uh, the uh, I, I, again, just to acknowledge the 
very hard work and diligence that you put in in, in this uh, presentation and the other few hundred pages that uh, were in the previous one mailed to the owners. I have no questions. Thank you. Okay, Rob. Do you have anything? I would say I ditto the same thing. Thank you for you know all the communications um, with us and with the membership. Okay, so I mean, thanks, guys. Thanks for all that. So what we'll do for here, Rhonda and staff, um, what we'll do is those who are on Zoom that have raised hands and want to uh, uh, make a comment verbally, perhaps you could call on them and unmute them. When you're unmuted and called on, uh, it's just because I won't have all the um, names and, and uh, uh, screens on the screen. So if you could just give us your name and then uh, to your comment, if there's a question embedded in that, we'll write it down and get to it at the back.